And, and then from there, I did I did some morning radio for local station 93Q, uh, a Saturday morning show um, with, with my best friend, who was also a comedian. And that was that was fantastic. I had a blast doing that. And now I'm working. Now I do a podcast, uh, the, the Yuba and Center podcast, just talking to people in the Yuba Center area about interesting things and just having a good time with it. So see, I even forgot about uh, Randy's uh, yes cast, right? Or yeah, 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 yes, yeah, 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 yes, yes, uh, Yuba and Sutter. So yeah, Yuba and Sutter. yeah. And that's been you started in 2020, right? I, I think I started right at the beginning of COVID, probably like June of whenever COVID started in 2020, right? Like my time frames are March. Yeah, yeah. March, March, I can't. I was, I kind of knew who Mr. Beast was. I love Mr. Beast. Because of my daughter, right? But I yeah. was thinking, that's not real. He doesn't give money away. Like, I was just thinking it's like clickbait stuff, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And when he came out on Rogan, I was like, dude, this guy's an amazing kid. Like, he's, I, I, I followed him for a long time. And like, I, I would but see But you him, knew I, he was I, real? I, I would see him on Twitch and he would just be like, uh, you know, he would tip somebody like $1,000 and they'd be like, uh, is cussing? Are we cussing on here? No, oh cussing. yeah, you're good. Okay. It, we're good. The, you know, dude's playing whatever game. Be like, what the fuck? Like, oh no! And they, he would just go. Blow, his mind would be blown that he got tipped a thousand dollars, and then he would like do it again. And like, like that's real. Like that's he just tipped him a thousand dollars, and then he would do it to another guy and another guy, and it was just like he's just giving away all this. Mo- like, what is happening? It, like, it blew my mind how much money he gave away, just constantly. And, I, and it was like, where does he? Where does he get all this money from? Uh, yeah. So, so to, well, because I don't think there's really, well, I think now in, in this past year, there's been a lot of in-depth on him and his mm-hmm. life and everything, but I don't think there was a lot about him though, right? Like prior? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I just saw him on YouTube and just saw his like his little, you know, little clips and stuff I, I, for years probably, but uh, I, I don't, I didn't know much about him. I knew he was like a young kid. I didn't realize he was that young because even on Rogan, he. He was like, what, 23? 20, 23? Yeah. 23. And he's been around for a and long time. he started time. when he was 11. I, I knew he was obsessive about YouTube, but I didn't know he was that obsessive about it. Um, and he just, yeah, he just, uh, I, I think he got big by like saying one word over and over again or something. Like, I can't remember one of his first videos. Yeah. Uh, yeah do, doing something, counting to a million or something stupid like that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Even on Rogan, he's like, this is what I sound like. And <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't even know. What, well, I guess he's so busy, you know, and he's doing. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was interesting his lack of awareness of like common like cult, pop culture. Like, wait, what's a South Park? Like South Park? Like, like he had no clue what like all these common things were, and it was just it was like you're like the guy that is on the trends of everything. Like, how do you not know about so many things? I thought I thought that was interesting. I think because he's a master, right? Ten what ten thousand hours? He's a master of that craft, and he's dedicated so much to it. And he, what he says he wants to be a the first YouTube billionaire. Something like that, yeah. So, you can imagine, you know, all the effort that goes into that, you know. You bet. I, I, I love him. I, he seems like nothing but a genuinely nice guy, just giving constantly, not just for attention. And I just, I just, I, I love the dude, man. And, and he's very business savvy. Like if you look at his, uh, his Mr. Beast Burgers, you know, he's got zero, uh, prop. You know, he's he's got zero investment in like property. He just has the system. And you know, the, the companies can go and buy into that system and, and, and sell his burgers and he gets a cut of that and he didn't do anything like, he you know, he didn't have to do much. Uh, you know, he didn't have to he didn't have to buy a property, you know, put in all these appliances and hire workers and train them. Nope. He just said, hey, here's my burger. Sell it. Yeah, I think that's the interesting thing about uh, social media. If you know how to use it to your advantage. Right. Because before. Right. We're, how old are you now? Thirty nine. Uh, Forty one. Forty one. I'm forty three. But you remember infomercials, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Day yeah. and night, right? And because uh, I remember, do you know who Mark Sisson is? Like the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Primal Kitchen? Yeah, I know Mark Sisson. I followed him for a long time. Yeah, so his story was like, you know, I did infomercials. I did this. I started doing this. I had a blog. And then eventually, you know, it worked for him. But he was like, man, if I had this back then, I wouldn't have he, to jump he, he, he to He could have so done many. the shortcut and just gone right to, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, it, I, I, I see a lot of stuff. Because I, I, I follow a lot of people. I do a lot of like... Uh, I don't know. I follow a lot of just people that are uh, teaching how to do that stuff. And I, I, it's interesting to me, although I don't ever like actually follow their advice, but there is a hundred percent like a system to how to use Instagram, how to use YouTube, a, a way to do it. It's not just getting lucky and posting 
that one special video or that one that one image that hits a lot of people that might happen but it's all it's there's so much to it of like how often to post when to post what to post um and being very consistent with that over a long ass time um yeah i heard uh gary v talking about that i think he was i can't i don't remember wh where i heard it from but he was somebody was saying i want to be the next ellen degeneres or Joe. he's like it's a marathon it's yeah seven to ten years and if you really think about it you go oh man it's tough you know it's it, tough to have a full-time job to have a kid to any like all that makes it really difficult unless you're just dedicating yourself to it and you don't have to worry about and exterior yeah, things you yeah. know and i i think that's kind of what helped rogan was he didn't have to do it he knew it was important and i remember like the first time i heard him i was like no one has these conversations it's, it's just yeah 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 he, he's just talking to a dude about something just about whatever's interesting and and, and everyone else is like that mushroom guy is super interesting or that you know i like uh the the, the ancient alien guys uh georgio sukulos like, he was like, on there? Yeah, yeah, he's been on there. Uh, this is like back in the day, okay. but like he's been on there a bunch of times, and it was just like it was like at like the height of ancient aliens, where it was just like everybody was into aliens, and it was just like he's just talking to the ancient aliens, dude, just having an open ass conversation about all sorts of cool, interesting things, and I and, and just like there's been so many guests, it's just like ah, I wish I could just sit down and talk. Like I would love to just sit down and talk to this guy, and it's not like a. I think a lot of other forms of interviews or are they're like interviews. They're you know. Um, they're kind of like structured and there's time limits and there's uh bullet points that the person wants to get across and it's not just like oh hey dude like what do you what are you up to like what do you you know you know it's just a casual conversation that you know he's talking about their expertise usually but um i don't know it's just it, it, it's more getting to know that person on a deeper level the person gets comfortable they open up a little more they say new things they say you know they say interesting things that uh you just don't get when you're like tell me all about social media or whatever you t t tell me about your marketing you, you know you, you they're just having a conversation and you know what that's the thing i like the most about like rogan and kind of the people that have branched off of him is they don't have an agenda and you can tell when someone has an agenda or they're trying to sell you something yeah yeah, they, yeah. and there's so much of that like you know life coaches and uh, yeah yeah life coaches and, and to me it's like i mean i get it you're, you're trying to make a living and everything but to me it's more like what are you passionate about? You know, what's your art? You know, it doesn't matter what it is, you know? To me, is do you care about what you're doing? Or there's something that you like and you just want to focus on it and grow, grow on it, you know? Like, I don't know, you still do stand-up comedy? So before I even keep, it, keep going here, I want to introduce Randy because I didn't even introduce him from the beginning. This is Randy Warner. Uh, tell people a little bit about you and... But what you're currently doing, because the, the first time I had him was my audio only audio only podcast. And he, honestly, he was one of the first people in Yuba Sutter area who listened to podcasts and was super open minded. I knew nothing about him. And we're talking about the fighter and the kid and how you went to Calusa Casino. That's right. That's right. We, we, we had a blast. We initially thought we were supposed to talk about astronomy. <laughs> Which I, I totally forgot about that. I remember doing the podcast. I forgot we were talking about astronomy was the main thing. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess about me, like, I'm trying to think. I always think, like, I'm not that interesting. Like, I don't know. Um, I, I guess I've done a bit of stuff, though. I, I, I was part of an astronomy group in the Yuba Sutter area that would, we would do, like, um, about about once a month, we'd do community star nights where we bring our telescopes out and we would give the community, whoever wanted to show up, we'd give them tours of the stars. We'd let them look through our telescopes. We'd look at you know, the Andromeda galaxy, we try to find planets where planets are out. We look at um, just some deep sky objects if we can find them. Sometimes they're kind of hard to, f to find. Um, so we just had, I had fun with that. And then I did oh, uh, stand-up comedy for a little bit where I, uh, first I just did it just to do it. And then I ended up taking over as the host for the, I think the only open mic comedy in the Yuba Sutter area. So I did that for a handful of years and, and that was, um, that was fun. And that was, I learned a lot of stuff. Uh, I learned how hard it is to be funny on purpose. And I learned what it feels like to bomb a bunch, which is not fun. Uh, I, I don't know where it's, where other spots are at, but life has been back to normal for probably at least a year here, where, yeah. where everything's been fully open. You might have some masking, but like every, everything's just opened up and everyone's having a good time. Do you still work for the state, Rand? Still work for the state. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm working from home right now, and I love it because my commute is in Sacramento. I, you know, I usually work in, in downtown Sac, which uh, I, I don't have that commute anymore. So I, I'm rolling out of bed like last minute like roll out of bed hop on the computer like okay i'm at work you know just i'm in my underwear sometimes sometimes i'm not even wearing a shirt for like half the day um i i just i love it i love it uh we're slowly getting back to i think going 
back to the office. Because I, I read that because I was reading the Bay Area's recently started getting everyone back, right? And everyone doesn't want to go back. Like, no, I, I, I would take a pay cut probably to, to stay at home uh, permanently or it is just, it is so much nicer. I don't know. It's just, it just way not, there's so many more things like you, you have these little in between times during work where, you know, you, okay, cool. I'm gonna go do a load of laundry right now. I'm going to do some food prep. I'm going to go take a walk. I'm going to clean my room. What, you know, what, there's little things that you can do that like when you're, you know, in Sacramento, I can't, I can't do my laundry while I'm in Sacramento. Uh, I got to wait till I get home and cook dinner and do that stuff. And, and get stuck in traffic. Get stuck in traffic. So when you have an hour commute there, an hour commute back, that's two hours a day driving on top of having to do all those chores when you get home where I can take a lunch hour. I can make a, a good, healthy lunch that's made from home and I can, you know, tidy up the kitchen. And, and so it's all done already, which is just, uh, I don't think I was, you know, it's such a huge benefit that is, it's it just, I don't ever want that to end for me. Like I just, I love it. I love working at home. Um, I, I've also found it interesting that like, I, I don't know what the, I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out like why this is, but like, I'll notice it'd be like nine o'clock at night time and I'll be like bored and I'll be like, Hmm, I should hop on my work computer. Well, I should like, I'll, I'll hop on my computer sometimes and like check an email or something. I don't know why, like, like I, I'm usually like, like when I'm off of work, I am checked out. I'm not going to answer anything. I'm not going to do anything. And I, nothing is required of me. So it's not like I'm, it's not like people are hounding me to like, Hey, stay later. But, uh, it is, it is, I'm off of work. I am checked out. I have no stress on it and whatever. But every once in a while, I'm like, yeah, I got my laptop here. I might, I might hop on work and just, I feel like, I feel like working at nighttime. I feel, I feel like I'm a night person when it comes to working. I, I don't know why that is, but I'm, I'm learning that about myself. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I'm more of a morning person, but I mean, yes and no. It's kind of like hardwired into me just waking up really early, but to go to bed early. But I hate that when you start waking up early and then sometimes, there's a point in the night where you can't go to sleep. Yeah, you know, yeah that's me like, like every night. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So I even take like a sleep cocktail from um, what's that Stanford professor that's been on Rogan and Mark Smelly Bell's uh, podcast. Well, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to. Th I'm trying to think. Uh, I, pr I probably know who he's he like is. a neuroscientist. Um, I 100% I know who he has. A, about. He has a goatee. I uh, Huberman. Andrew uh, Huberman. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He talked about it on Rogan about a sleep uh, cocktail. It's it's natural. You don't get addicted to it. He says a good thing too is uh, getting that uh, light in the morning before the before the sun comes out. Even when the sun comes out, I think just kind of looking at it's like protons from the sun that go into your eye to reset your circadian rhythm to, so to get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little, a lot of little tips like that that I kind of like to follow because I like to get into that rhythm. I mean, it's hard. Life is crazy and it's almost impossible to have like a schedule and a rhythm, you know. Do, do, do you ever feel overwhelmed like listening to like podcasts? Because you, you listen to a lot of podcasts. A lot, yeah. Uh, Andrew Huberman's podcast is fantastic. Uh, it's a lot of sciencey shit, but it's also like digestible and like, mm -hmm. oh, I can understand that. Uh, I think a lot of times I, get, I listen to these things and like, uh, I think like a Tim Ferriss is somebody who like, oh, this is some good stuff. And all of a sudden you're like, you're overwhelmed. Like, I can't do all, like, okay, I, I am just a waste of, like, I just, I cannot follow all the stuff. There's too many things. There's too much stuff to track. There's too many, um, I, it's just like, this is impossible. I just, I'm just trying to not be too tired throughout the day. It's just one of those things where I, I get so overwhelmed. It's like, well, I give up. I'm just going to stay up late and wake up early and be tired all the time. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you ever get that way where it's just like, oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. w w when you hear a process, I, I do this a lot like dieting where it's like, you just got to take this and eat this and, but you got to watch out for these levels of this and make sure you're getting enough of this vitamin. And it's just like, can we just fucking eat food? Like, like, I, and, I, and also it's like, I, I just get overwhelmed. I don't have to eat. And so I just grab a bag of like Hershey's or something, which is what I'm doing uh, at home now. Cause I got a big bag of Hershey's kisses. Um, and I'm just, I'm just chowing down on those. Cause I, I don't know. I, it's, I just get overwhelmed and it's like, I'm sure eating anything other than Hershey's is probably healthier. I'm, I'm a stressful eater. Yeah. Like, so when I start getting anxiety or there's too many things going on, then I just, start eating you know and it's just like damn i know i shouldn't be eating this and it's like you know i don't know issues happen because i also run a small family business and um i mean that's just it's always it's always been like that there's always issues there's always employee things there's there's always something huh? there's always something going on i'm i'm i mean you i was listening to your podcast with uh i forget justin's last name from justin's kitchen uh, france and, justin france yeah 
And I, I was really, it's like a three hour one. I think I only got to like an hour and a half. It was long. We were doing some drinking. We it had, was we, good. We were it was a good, good time. Though. It, it was, was good. good. Okay, good, 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 good. We, we, we had a fun time. I know I've, I've listened to a couple of yours, but I haven't finished a lot of them. I stay like in the middle because sometimes I'll listen to them when I'm cutting meat early and there's nobody around and I'll have one earpiece in, on. you know? So, yeah. Um, what made you want to start your own podcast? Uh, you know, it, I think like you was something like I should do a podcast. Like for years, like I should do a podcast. I just like I, I, so I think like with comedy, like I got more involved in the community. Like as far as like I was like the comedy guy, kind of. Um, I which I feel weird saying that because I don't feel like I'm the comedy guy. But like I feel feel like for a while I was like. Um, so I, I was like, it, 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 every month I would do the comedy thing. I'd promote it on Facebook. And, and through that, I got, I met a lot of other people. I met, um, I don't know, I just made a lot of new connections and I got more involved in the, in the city. And then through that, I started doing radio. So I got even more connected with people in the city and all that stuff. And I realized like, we have a pretty cool area here. Like there's a lot of interesting people. There's a lot of, uh, it's just really interesting beyond, you know, I don't know. It's just interesting. And, um, well, a lot of people don't know about this area or they assume well, they, they, they assume it's like they assume it's like uh, it's just drugs and farms and you know or whatever. It's like it's kind of like a I don't know it's a trashy place, but like it's just kind of like a rural like there's nothing up there in Yuba City. Like you skip Yuba, you go through Yuba City to go to Chico, which is, has a lot of cute shops. You know, it's like there's nothing much in you. But like no, we have like great our our restaurants are fantastic. I think like Justin's Kitchen is you know like a I don't know, mom and pop or whatever, but it's like you know it's not it's not a chain restaurant and it is delicious. And I feel like we have quite a few really good restaurants that are not like chain restaurants. Um, so anyway, we just, with, with all these interesting people that I've come across and, and, um, I just thought it'd be cool to have a podcast where you, and, and doing the radio, cause we, the radio, we kind of interviewed like, usually it was like, uh, people doing fundraising stuff or, you know, doing events or something, but I just, you know, there's so many interesting people. It would be nice to like to talk to them and get to know them. And, th- and then the other th- aspect was like with like, uh, elections and stuff, like you see these people, they, they might go on the radio show and do their 15 minute bullet points of like that, you know, just, you know, but it's like, well, who is this guy? Like, I don't know this guy. Like he sounds good in 15 minute bites, but like, what about if we sit down and have a, a two hour conversation? What's this guy going to sound like? Um, you know, is he going to reveal more about himself than just his bullet point version of him? You, you know what I mean? So I thought, so like, have you gotten a lot of those people from your radio interviews onto your podcast? Yeah, I've, I've had a few, like, uh, I did a Sean Harris, who was, he was the mayor of Yuba City, he's uh, on the council now, um, I'm trying to think, uh, like Stuart Gilcrest, Gary Bradford, um, Sean Harris, he used to be uh, uh, Highway Patrol, right? He was Highway Patrol, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a funny story, because uh, <laughs> when I was married, or my daughter's mother, she, they live on the same street. Oh, oh. So before he was, like, all of that, she was like, yeah, look, he's running for He's run for mayor. Yeah, or, I thought it was city council. Or, or, yeah, well, so yeah, he yeah. had like a rooster on his. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, on probably, his uh, yeah. flyer or whatever. So yeah, we, 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 with Yuba City, the, the mayor is uh, it's like a rotating position with the, with the city council members. Um, but yeah, I, I've had a handful. Um, I've had a handful of other people just sitting having conversations with them, and I, I know I know we have like election season. I start seeing all the signs and like, oh shit, it's it's election season, so I, I got to start like reaching out and contacting some of these people to see if I can get, get them on and, and, you know, just have a good conversation about what, cause a lot of these things, like, I don't even know what half these things actually do. Like, uh, but that's one thing I learned a lot last year about like, what do you guys actually do as a city council person or, or a supervisor? Um, you know, there's, and there's so many other positions and I see all these signs, like, I don't know what this person does. Like, is this important that we like this person? Is it like, does it matter? Is it, is it a big deal? So, so from interviewing like local, um, government officials, has your opinion changed about any? Did you have a preconceived notion of them? Uh, no, I, I mean, cause I, I think for most of them, I know them a little bit, um, like just through social media and interactions and, and like y- Yuba City, there's, it's kind of, I feel like there's a lot of like different circles in Yuba City. There's like this group of people that are all kind of in a circle. There's the business circle and there's the, and, and I feel like I'm in a good position where I'm, like, uh, if, if I was a Venn diagram, I'd have a little bit in everyone's circle. So it's like, I'm I like, uh, I feel like I'm in everyone's kind of, I feel like I'm a little bit. Radar, in yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so like, I'm not like in their circle, but like, I know them, I know the people in their circle and, and I know this circle too. So, so I, I feel like I have access to a lot of different people that maybe like 
you know, I, I, I feel like you hear a lot of people talk about like the good old boys and like, oh, this is like these people are like this and these people are like that. I'm friends with all of them, so it's like, so it's like I, I don't know who's right, what's wrong, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I just I know that I can sit down and have a conversation with this person and hear their point of view and hear what the, hear what's happening. And I can sit down with this person who is totally opposite and says this person's trash or whatever, and and have an enjoyable conversation with them too. And 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 again, that, that goes back to like. Like, I see all this weird stuff going on a lot. Like, people saying this about this person and that. And like, who are you? Like, who is this person? So it's a good chance to just sit down and talk and, like, get to know that person. Yeah. Well, I think you and I are both kind of cuts from the same cloth. We're, like, we're very open-minded. And I think we like to be around people. To me, I like to absorb information from people. Like, you can kind of tell. Once you start talking to them, you know what what they like, what they... You, yeah. You can kind of see, you know, and... I think everyone has a good and a bad side, you know, and oh, I think yeah, we're yeah, all yeah, yeah. we're all growing and learning, you know. I hate people just stereotyping people and being like, no, well, this person is that. Because, like, with what I'm doing now with my podcast and the YouTube channel, it's like Northern California News, right? I'm just digging through stuff and trying to look for, like, funny. I try not to focus on anything negative. That's good, that's good. Try to get something that, like, because, you know, like, you used to commute, I used to commute. I was like, man, it'd be nice. If I could just get news with no commercials. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the idea that came to me. And then I was thinking, there's so many so many stories that you go, no, that's not even real. That, they're so far out there. And it's like, yeah. It and, can't, it can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's so many of those. And it's just like, try to give it a, a little story to it or, a, or your own little take. And lighten somebody's commute, you know, have them um enjoy their because i used to i loved podcasts so much i'd be in the driveway right finishing listening to them oh you yeah, know? yeah 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 and that's what i'm that's what i'm trying to do but when you kind of dig with so many stories you you start seeing stuff like corruption right and i think corruption happens because you get to a certain point of power and no one's really seen anything that you're doing so you're giving yourself I'll give you an example. Um, the city of San Jose recently axed a city manager. She was making 700 k a year. That's not a bad gig. But that's like, I think, like the second highest. Of, like, you're not supposed to make it. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it seems like a lot to manage a city. I, I have no idea what goes into managing a city, but it seems like a lot. Yeah. And uh, I think her replacement was going to be $200 an hour and he couldn't do more than 40 hours. I was like, I would want that. But I think it changes you, though, you know, because you're making this amount of money. Are you really going to solve problems? Are you going to really solve these issues? I don't know. I think you're only going to focus on getting reelected and staying in that position. I, I think that's a big problem is, is, is you, you do what you can to, to make the people that are going to elect you happy. And so, so instead of like fixing the actual, like we have actual issues, uh, I, I saw some, I, I don't know, this is unrelated at all, but like, you know, our roads and Yuba city Marys are always like, they're notoriously bad. And I saw a post today about we're getting like license plate readers, the, 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 the share, you know, and it's like, and I saw someone be like, why the fuck are we getting license plate readers? Like, can you fix the roads first? And then maybe read, you know, like, it's just one of those things where it's like, we have so much stuff happening here. Like, can we just get like solve our actual problems? Like people are have been upset about the roads for as long as I've been here, which is like 20 years. Like the roads have never been that great. Um, is anyone going to solve the road issue or is that like, uh, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I saw that thing too. I think it was in Marisville where they're going to bring it up in the city council meeting yeah. next Tuesday. And I read something exactly about it in, uh, South, uh, the Southern Bay area, Los Altos. Do you know where that is? Uh, I, Los Gatos. Do you know? Yeah, where yeah, 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 yeah. So right in the, so it's a real nice area. Um, Alex Smith used to live there in like some of the Niners. It's a really, really nice area. And um, it helped because I guess there's like older people that are retired and there's like uh, carjacking, car theft, right? And um, I think a lot of police departments are very poorly staffed right now. And a lot of people don't want to be cops because I've been seeing like in Reading 40K signing bonuses. To become a cop. Oh, oh, yeah, because they, they can't get anyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, to me, it was like, okay, um, maybe this can help where there's something 24-7 seeing people that don't have license plates or are stealing cars and passing through and they can get them without having to manually Do, punch yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know anything about it. I think pe- people picture like everywhere you go, like there's some eye in the sky tracking your license plate and, and following you everywhere you go. And now the, the city knows everything you did. And, um, I, you know, people I probably worry about, maybe it's a good idea to worry about this. So we, you know, to, to keep things in check, but like, Oh, I'm going 66 and a 65. They're going to, now they have my license plate and they can just send me a ticket. Like, like, yeah, I know. I thought, I thought exactly the same thing. I was like, I don't want to be monitored. Right. Like the NSA and everything yeah, on yeah, your yeah. phone. Right. I don't know if you listened to that one guy who was from Spain and was like in the tech industry and was saying that's impossible. They can't get everything. I mean, imagine it. Imagine somebody listening into you. Like, to, to, to all the data and all yeah. that. Yeah, there's, and, it's too much data. Well, who knows? Maybe there's an AI that can shift through that, right? And knows when to grab stuff and like highlights it and like puts it in boxes. I don't know. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I mean, I mean, like at this point in time with, with the advancements we have in like technology – it wouldn't, n- nothing would surprise me that, because like if you have like an Alexa, it's always listening, because yeah. I, 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 you know, it doesn't seem like it, because you can talk, but like the second you say Alexa, like it had to be waiting for you to say that, like it didn't like, it didn't turn on after you said that, it was like, just sitting there fucking waiting for it to, for you to say Alexa, I'm sure it's probably hearing all the other shit you're mm-hmm. saying too, um, who knows, like are they capturing that at all, and, and, and storing it somewhere, uh, I have no idea, yeah. and it's, I mean, I'm sure it's ridiculous, and they probably can't do much with 99% of the data, uh, but they have the date, like, like they, you know, it's, I mean, we, we've all seen the thing where we say something stupid and all of a sudden we get ads for like fucking like pooper scoopers or some shit. Like, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, why? I just, I was just saying I had to pick up the dog poop outside and like, and getting weird ads and it's like, ugh. Yeah. No, I think, yeah. Privacy is an issue because we all sign up. We all agree, right. To give away our data. And I mean, I recently upgraded to an iPhone the newer ones, and I was always Android, and then I don't know Welcome if you listen. To the club. Welcome to the club. You're, you've always been Apple for a long time now, yeah. Well, I used to be like even like my old uh, my old Apple Cloud, like all the pictures from 2017 went up immediately. But um, I was just thinking, uh, yeah, it's more private. But if you use uh, the Apple Maps, <laughs> think compared to Google Maps, have you used Google Maps? Uh, not, not really. Yeah, it's, well, I used to, I don't know if I ever told you I Ubered for like a year. I think, no, I, I, think I, I think I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So I did it from like 2016 to 2017 and, uh, Google maps was just always on, would, would tell you, right? Like there's traffic or avoid this area. And, um, like if you're looking for stuff, I think Google maps is probably one of the best. Way better. I, I, I tried using DuckDuckGo, which is like the secure search engine. No, it's not that good. Uh, I was like, like this thing sucks compared. Like, like, like I thought. I thought you'd like. I think usually when you search for something, like, okay, you kind of have a pretty good idea, so you search for it, and it should be coming up. The, like DuckDuckGo sucks. Like, like, like I'm all for like security and privacy and all that stuff, but it sucks. Like, there's so many times yes. where I'm like, fuck this. Like, I'm gonna go to Google and and that dude's gonna give me the exact thing that I want right there. Like, first answer. <laughs> like, like, I know. I know. Yeah. And I mean, that's a tricky thing because all your data, right, gets stored and it helps with a better search and where you're located, right? But then, I mean, I think recently, what was it, like a zero hack for Chrome? For Chrome, yeah. Right? A zero day Have they fixed that? Vulnerable. Yeah, I think that, yeah. They, Have they? they, they, they got it, I'm pretty sure they got it fixed right away. If you haven't updated your Chrome, okay, I'll update it now. Yeah, I, have, I just deleted it. I stopped using it. I use Brave. I don't know if you know yeah. what Brave browser is. I haven't used it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, I've been using it. Well, I started getting into crypto, um, was it last year? I don't even know. I mean, I've always been a very big crypto fanatic. Just because when I heard about it, I don't know how 2008, if it affected you, but it affected us really bad, right? And I remember hearing about Satoshi Nakamoto and creating a currency that's uh, deflationary, right? It's not going to... Because it, it's got a limit of 21 million mm-hmm. coins and you can't, yeah. And I mean, the whole point of it was for me and you and everybody be able to transactions between us. But it, you know, big tech or, you know, uh, Wall Street, they all get into it and it just changes it. Because, it, yeah. But I'm still, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on it. I mean, how do you, are you worried right now about everything that's going on with like... Gas. So this, int- this is interest a hard rate. one uh, because I I, I I feel like because I work for the state and I've worked there for over twenty years now, I feel so secure in my job. Um, you know, I make okay money. Like I I am established in, in my house, so it's like I, I don't really worry about. I mean, I'm not like 
I, I feel stuck. Like I, I'm not, I can't like get up and move across the country or anything like that. Like I can't do that. There's a lot of things I can't do. So I'm pretty limited to like doing what I'm doing right now with the state being at the house I'm at. Um, but I don't worry about any of that shit. Like it, it, no. it is zero. Like, like I mean, I mean, it's it sucks when like, you know, my wife's got to commute some, and and gas prices are up, and food's expensive. It's like, oh shit, like it's this much. Uh, is your daughter already eighteen or? Uh, she, uh, sixteen just got her 16. permit, so we we've been hitting the road lately with a new driver on the road. Uh, but but yeah, so, so I, I haven't worried at all about anything, um, which I, I've been super thankful for for that. Uh, and I feel like I just got lucky just what, you know, I, I think it was my, I, my dad's fault probably. Cause he was like, work, work for the, cause my mom worked for the state. My dad was like a lumber salesman. My dad just pounded him head, work for the state uh, as long as you can, you know, just like it's a, whatever. And, and it was just like, that's, that's what I ended up doing. And it was, I mean, he was kind of, I mean, like I feel like I said, I feel stuck and I don't have, I feel, I don't always feel like I have a lot of freedom, which is stressful. I, I think that's the biggest stress is like, not feeling like I have purpose or, or I get stressed out about that of like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm not doing like my passion or whatever that, whatever that means. But no, I haven't worried about really anything. Cause I've just, I've been, I'm high, I'm high enough enough where I make enough to where I don't have to worry. Job security's there. Um, you know, but it's all, it's all covered for me right now. Yeah. No, I mean with me just 2008, like, Everything went bad. You know, business used to be booming, and I don't think it ever... I left the, the family business shortly after, just because it's it's tough to work with uh, parents who don't speak English and are oh, from yeah. another country. And, I mean, I'm, Rom- I'm raised Roman Catholic, right? And to some extent, I believed it. To some extent, I, I don't know more. I consider myself spiritual, you that, know? That, that, yeah, that, I, think that's, I think most people are going to spiritual rather you than so? a certain religion or... I mean, I don't know. From the people, well, a lot of Mexicans I know are very conservative and still believe in like prayer and all. and if it helps you, great, you yeah. know. But to me, it's more like meditating, right? Getting into that space of letting thoughts not consume you, not having your voice, that voice Take always over. running. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what I've. And it doesn't even take that long, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes. You don't have to be doing it for an hour. I mean, I'm sure you can get in the zone. But if you practice that morning and and night, I mean, it's so transformative. You know, so, so, so start with just five minutes and and it, and build up from there. But yeah, it's uh, I I think prayer and meditation and I think all that stuff's the exact same thing. Like I think it all comes from the same place. It does the exact same thing. It's just a different way. You know, mm-hmm. pr- I think prayer sounds weird. Like oh, you're talking to a guy in the sky. Like it sounds like what well, is like dear Jesus. Like like what, what am I doing here? Like one more time. Like it sounds weird and it's like I feel like you're asking for things sometimes. Yeah, and it's yeah. like. Uh, but when you meditate and you, you maybe meditate on a certain thing or you, you know, like I think, I think manifestation is another one of those things where it's all kind of the same. Like when you think about it and you, uh, I don't know, just meditate on it. Your brain starts to like, uh, the same thing with your prayer, when you ask Jesus for whatever or God for whatever, it's like your brain connects to that and, and, you know, it starts thinking about it like in the back, in the background, you know, and, and, and it's like, eventually you start getting answers. You start, um. You know, if you if you start trying to manifest something or you meditate on something, your brain starts to think about it. And you start focusing on it and you start making decisions towards that thing instead of making a bunch of bad decisions. You know, and, and you know, if you're trying to get a six pack and you're always thinking, <laughs> you're always thinking about it. Right. You meditate on it. You pray on it. You manifest it. All of a sudden, when that pack of, uh, of Hershey's Kisses comes up, you're like, fuck that, man. I want a six pack and you're not you're not going to eat it anymore. Right. You're, you're going to make the right decision, you know, without even thinking about it. No, that's that is kind of funny. Yeah, that's that's really funny, man. I don't know. I mean, I I don't know. With me, I kind of I kind of became a workaholic coming back to to work here, and um, winter was really tough. Just because it usually is, my parents were in Mexico for two months, and I was working like eighty hour weeks, and oh, we were damn. like crazy short staff. Like people started getting COVID. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. So they're kind of forced to stay home, you know? Yeah, that, yeah. And sometimes it was just me and another guy. And um, I think in, like, Christmas time, um, I don't know if it was Christmas Eve or the day after Christmas. It was just me and some other guy. And um, two other people called out. And there was a van parked behind our business. And I was like, why is that van there, you know? And then later, I don't know if it was the next, or somebody told me that they were um, breaking into small businesses. 
Oh. And Gridley. Um, there's like a tap house or rail house or something like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. They, they sell like beer on tap. Sounds like, good though. So I don't know what it, but it's a small business, but they broke into like, and they even cut the power. Right. To, to, oh, wow. Wow. So then I was like, what? what's going on? Right. And then some, I think another person on like North Beale Road had like that boiling crab. Do you know what I'm talking about? Don't know that one no, I don't know what it's called. But I guess they shot at the door and it didn't come down. And I think they would like take off, cut the power, shoot at the door. And if it came down, they would run in and take their register or whatever. And I was thinking, you know what? I think those were the same guys. And when I tried to go look back at my video, it was already seven days and I couldn't go uh -uh. back. But that was a thing, too, where I was like, see that license plate reader. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to say, like, yeah, I, I wish we had a fucking license plate reader now. Like, who is this guy? But I, I don't know if they, they might have caught him or they might have just left. Because I think there's a lot of people coming in from, like, other counties and other cities. Have you been hearing about those robberies in, like, in nice areas in the Bay Area where they're coming from, like, South America? I, I didn't hear about South America. But, yeah, I, I've seen, like, they come in, like, you know, uh, groups of people where they just uh, rush a store and... Take a bunch of shit and everyone's like, okay, here you go. Like, like, what are you going to do? There's 20 of them. Uh, yeah, no, there's been um, Hillsboro. Have you heard of Hillsboro? It's a really nice, everything's like a couple million dollar houses. No. There. And they're taking safes and stealing cars. And they're supposedly the FBI is saying that it's um, groups from South America. Why South America? I have no idea. And they... They say it's like a vacation crime spree. They come to like real rich areas and there's like nothing there, right? Where no security or whatever. And they're specific. I mean, how do they know? I don't know. Facebook, Maybe. bro. They're looking on Facebook in nice areas. Or they're they're peeking, peeking at these people's profiles. They, they get an idea so? of like, I mean, that's what I would it do. It makes like, sense. Because like, huh? you get, get these random friend requests from these people that you have no idea. People give are. away all the information on Facebook. Yeah. If you get an idea of like, oh, this neighborhood doesn't look too secure uh and it looks like they have a lot of money i bet you we can take 20 guys up here and uh take everything and leave before anyone actually cares uh, that makes sense and, that makes and, sense. and if they get i mean and, and like it feels wild westy right now like if they got caught what are they gonna do are they gonna get deported are they gonna go to jail for a long time like especially with covid like i don't know man like you hear local stories where people get caught and it's like well they kind of let can't, him go. Can't really do much. I just read a story about like a, a guy that was like attacking people. He got arrested and then released, arrest, arrested, released, arrested, released, and for attack, like he was attacking cops and what it was like within like a week or something. It was like three times. I, I can't remember this whole story, but it was just like, shouldn't this guy like be put away for a little bit, like for attacking people and and you know uh, assaulting a cop and like, but I I I don't know. It's it's a weird it's weird times right now. Yeah, yeah. COVID has kind of shown a lot of cracks in like the systems like everything right from manufacturing to shipping to everything like it, it and we're so vulnerable you know I, I was just having this conversation with my buddy he he, uh, he owns phoenix ridge uh and the, the the lady that owns it um what's phoenix ridge it's a, it's a screen printing shop on, on plumas street um they, they they do. I, I got like so many other shirts, man. Oh, They're, just t-shirts. Well, they they, they, they do screen. Or it's printing. like a printing. They, they do screen printing in a broader. But they they sell like some of their own branded t-shirts. Okay. Favorite shirts, man. I love them. Uh, t they're only ten bucks too, so it's a good deal. Good shirt right. is way, way to go. Um, but she, but she was saying like, yeah, man, we, we have our like supply chain issue. Like it's hard to get these cool shirts. We're, we're we've been switching out shirts, and it's I mean it's just shirts, but like it it highlights like before the whole COVID thing. Like you just order stuff without thinking, and now it's like. You don't. You walk into Walmart and like, where's all the fucking vegetables right now? Like, what's what's going on here? Like, where oh, yeah? is? You see like an empty section in Walmart, and it's like, that doesn't seem right. Like, you guys gonna restock this thing? Or what? It, it, it realize you realize how delicate the supply chain actually is, and once it kind of, you know, gets a little shaky, all of a sudden things start not showing up, and it was like, it, it gets it gets a little like surreal when you're in Walmart and you and you uh, you see an empty shelf, and you're like, man, like what if two shelves were empty? What if, you know, this whole aisle was empty? What if there was no bread in this aisle? Like, you you, you, you can kind of start to visualize, like, damn, I, maybe I should start growing my own food. Maybe I should start, like, learning how to hunt or something. You, you know what I mean? You know what? That's kind of the thing that got into my head in 2008. And that's still kind of my long-term goal is to buy land. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it here anymore. But I kind of feel like there's a crash coming because... 
you know, everything, it's, it almost looks exactly like 2006, 2007, because I knew a lot of people in real estate back then, and everyone was refinancing, everybody was taking equity out of their homes, right, buying cars, buying Hummers, yeah, Escalades, yeah. and then you see now, and it's all these big trucks, right, and, um, and, I, and I think about that, and I go, is that going to happen again, like, is, is it going to crash, because I, I kind of feel like it's, and if it does, then great. I'll go buy some land somewhere and get a good deal. Yeah. Well, I don't even know if I want to buy a house. So I think I just want land. Do you know who Kyle Kingsbury is? Uh, no, but it sounds familiar. So he used to be a UFC fighter. He married um, one of the ring girls. He was from San Jose. Atta boy, atta boy. And um, he was part of Onyx. Like he was okay. like a branch of like Aubrey Marcus's podcast. And he was kind of like a guinea pig. Like he would do. Do you know what NDA is? Not disclosure agreement. <laughs> no, is that what? I, uh, and you any any day. Um, I forget what it. I don't know if they're like stem cells or something that get injected into oh, your yeah, gut. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it lowers your biological age. But I think you got to get it through an IV, NAD. And uh, okay. they're called NADs. I've I've I don't know. Like Doctor Ronda Patrick was talking about them. But supposedly it takes like six hours, and if it goes faster than that, then like your gut feels like it's on fire. Wow. But after, it like will lower your biological age, and it will lengthen your telomeres on your... I like that. It sounds like a good idea. So he was like on its guinea pig, right? He'd take peptides, everything. All that, all like, that stuff. All of psychic, everything, everything, right? And now, like, um, he is really much into um, sustainable farming. He bought like 100 acres. I don't know if it's in Austin or south of Austin. And he's really big into like conspiracy theories. Like, I don't, I don't know if he's a conspiracy theorist. Like, I recently started listening to him again. But uh, he put a link on this one solo cast he had in November talking about um, Plandemic. Have you oh, heard of that? Oh, I, I, I've kind of heard. I, I love conspiracy theories. I don't. I never believe any of them because that's like my skeptical mind just doesn't believe anything. Uh, but I, I've heard of Plandemic, but I, I didn't like dive into it i don't know it's it's i i I watched it and i was like wow it's so one-sided like is this real like and and it's kind of nuts because they have like these training programs that was in 2019 like this is what everyone's going to talk about when the pandemic hits like pre-covid oh yeah 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 and it was weird like why are they why did they do all this and like um, having patents for COVID, right? Like all these different companies had patents and they didn't even care. And like, do you believe in the lab leak theory? What what what, what is the what is that one? The lab leak theory? Oh, oh, oh like the, the the Wuhan, like it came out of the, like it. I mean, that seems plausible. Like I, I haven't followed that in a while, but it seems like uh, it's pretty plausible that it that it there was some sort of lab leak in Wuhan that where the virus originated from. I don't know where I heard this or where I think, you know, Lex Friedman is. Yeah. Yeah. So he had somebody on there. I don't know who he was. And they were talking about that Wuhan lab and how like 30 to 50, um, um, virus specialists or whatever you want to call them. Right. That they wanted to build this lab there, but it had to go under French strict, code and like safety yes yes and in the end only one french dude stayed because the chinese government was outsourcing all the work to like make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and if you don't follow all you know if if you're not all strict with your building materials and everything because it's i mean it's a virus it's a deadly it's a deadly ass virus that 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 sounds like it was i mean i mean like it sounds like a movie it it sounds like it was like mutated to affect humans more like like i mean that's like what it i mean again i i don't follow this closely because it's uh it's so much nicer not yeah not hearing this stuff all the time it's way better for my mental health but like (laughs) it, it sounds like it was like a leak from a you know it, it escaped or whatever from fucking prison break from a lab in China and it was uh, it was it was engineered to be more deadly to humans and more contagious to humans. Um, I, I have no idea. Like I said, I, I don't follow that enough, but like that that's what like the the gist I get. Where it's like that seems pretty plausible depending on who you listen to. Yeah, I mean, I kind of 
it makes sense because like a lot of records were burned by the Chinese government and some of the first doctors that warned that it what was happening were killed immediately. Oh, they, or yeah. they killed or they died they, from they, they, they died, they from, died from, from yeah, but, but that's the thing with China, like like I would say maybe especially with China, you don't know what you're getting like you're getting information. Is that the real story? Is that like what are you actually getting? You don't really know. And I mean to me, like think about China. How bad the pollution is. Is the food as good as the food here? Like, I don't think it is, man. It's like a lot of it is GMOs and... MSG. Uh, they, they probably got some high MSG foods over there too, I bet. <laughs> like, have you heard about, like, the they're, they're recycling, like, oil from the gutters and stuff in China? Have you heard about that? No. Yeah. So, like, do you know who Ari Shafir is? Yeah. He was out there. He was, like, years ago, and he was just talking about how they, like, would recycle it and how... When he went to the bathroom, there's just holes in the stalls, right? He's like, Where is, what is that? where's the toilet? There's just holes in the stalls. And you have to, like, grab on and stuff. And he was saying that the street vendors, they go and from, like, certain gutters, wherever it's, like, coming out, they recycle the oil from there. That's crazy. So, I mean, I've never been there. And I can just imagine, right, a I mean, communist I mean, country, right? Just how bad it is there. So, like, is there? There's, I don't think there's not even bees there, right? In China, it wouldn't surprise me if there's not if there's no bees in China. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the Olympics, the small, the how bad the pollution was. That... I, I heard, I've heard it was pretty. I mean, I, I've seen like pictures of China where it's just like that looks pretty bad. That, that looks. I mean, I'm sure. I'm, I, I don't know how it compares to like L.A. because I'm sure L.A. is probably pretty polluting in L.A. too. But I think it's worse. But, but I feel, I feel like it's probably it's probably worse. And but I feel like they don't have a lot of regulation like, like in america no, like we, we no. got some shit where like you got to keep this shit clean like the best you can and i think we send like when we recycle like electronics uh i feel like I, I, don't quote me on this but i feel like our recycling is we ship it all to china and they burn it or something like they, they throw it in a fucking volcano or something i here. think they used to like, like they, I, I think they used to I, they like, used to take it all and reuse it or whatever but i don't think they do anymore it wasn't like healthy like it was probably a guy with a with a a COVID mask, but not the N95, just, you know, me melting all this metal to try to get the copper out or something, you know, like, like it wasn't like, we're not really recycling. We're just putting fumes in the air. We're just putting them in China instead of in America. But that's why I think, um, that's what I think is COVID's killing people. I believe it's not that it is bad. I know it's real. And even here in the United States, like um, there's this guy called the model, uh, Steven, Sean Stevenson. He has a model health show. And it's just about, you know, kind of being healthier and little steps to get here and there. But prior to having his own podcast, he was a data analysis on health. Right. And he was showing that like the three causes of deaths in uh, the United States was uh, heart disease, diabetes and um obesity right and a lot of covid deaths were comorbidities with with, with all the yeah, with, with those three huh? yeah. yeah and it wasn't you know if if you it wasn't just straight covid you know and even in the beginning remember they were putting the um tubes down it and they're even popping their lungs and they're not gonna admit yeah 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 that they were doing but that. It, it, it seems like the numbers have been so uh skewed so, like, like a skewed or just, or just like unclear like it's it's hard to get like what what is the actual number like because people do die of covid yeah and it is serious but like there's comorbidities and it's like most healthy healthy people aren't dying like like they're 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 getting it they're maybe how many people from the nfl from the nba they, right they, yeah yeah so and, and this is like during like the delta variant where, which was pretty i feel like it's pretty i feel like now it's like it's mutated enough to where it's like contagious but cool like yeah covid no big deal but like there were some serious strains of it and, it, and, and i feel like people um I feel like it really affected the heart disease, obesity, you know, uh, the diabetic people. Like, it affected them the most. Autoimmune. Yeah. Which is like, just don't fucking take care of yourself, man. That's what, that's what we're here for. Like, like, I remember that was like one of the first things I was starting to do. Because I would wake up early sometimes. I would, you know, sleep five, six hours. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to sleep eight. I don't care. I'm going to force Get myself. your rest, yeah. yeah. And not, like you said... Not look at the news. I stopped completely with the news because it was just so overwhelming. Like, oh, it's this. It, you, I don't know if you remember, like, 2020, it seemed like Kobe Bryant died. And then, 
you know, the deadly wasps. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it, it was, it was just, like it was never. It was like one end. thing after another. And there's there's a giant chicken coming out of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I I, I noticed the same. Like, I'll go in cycles with news where I like I'll listen to it and like I think what the fuck am I like what is this doing like whenever has I have listened to news is like this is something important I should jot down and and, and do something about never like I've never like it's never affected me it's never you know or, or at least something that I can change. So I realized like when I shut it all off. Like in about a week, all of a sudden it's like the sky looks a little bluer. Like like I'm a little bit happier. Like I get like a little bit better sleep, and I'm like, well, my heart's just normally beating. It's not like pounding, and it's not like you know, stre- I'm not stressed out constantly. It's like, wait a minute, life's pretty good. When you don't watch the fucking news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you go outside and you talk to your neighbor. You you go down to fucking Justin's kitchen. You have a drink and you have a great conversation with some stranger next to you, and it's like the yeah. news sucks we're, man we're, yeah i know yeah. we're we're lucky to be where we are yeah, the, yeah. I, I feel like the news is just a bunch of it's just the worst the worst things that you can talk about to get people's attention so they keep listening and i don't know the, the world is so much better than what you see on the news like i, yeah. I i'm 100 percent believe that i do too no i do too i just well i mean this is this is what's the important thing you know C- communication amongst people not arguing not you know i believe this or i believe that do you think that's kind of settled down with people kind of having their own beliefs is that beginning to fade away or like like is, are people starting to communicate again or, or like or, or or are people well, like getting i feel that people still put people in boxes and define people a certain you're way you're a republican you're you're, the, you're, you're liberal you're so you uh, fit in this box you know if you're this you're this you know it used to be like that i don't know like i'm beginning to kind of see that people are beginning start to, to unwind i i feel like with the new the, the new generation like like i feel like <laughs> i feel like with younger kids I, I feel like I don't know. I mean, I've got a kid, and whatever. I don't, I'm not like fucking hanging out with him all the time. You want some water or another whiskey? Um, I'm, I'm good right now. Good. I, yeah, okay. I feel like they are like, uh, and this could just be my, my tiny slice of what I see. I feel like I feel like they're like fucking rubbing their eyes and like, fucking everybody's insane. Like, what is happening here? Like, we're not going to be like these nut jobs. Like, like you know, like 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 you know, we're not going to be arguing with everybody constantly. We're not going to be nitpicking and yelling at people and and you know uh just being against everything i, I feel like they're kind of like I, I feel like they have this like thing that they, they, they can see the world and be like that's not sustainable which i i kind of feel like that like this is my like theory on like how everything works is uh you have like a generation and they have some faults like what, what you know whatever you start like the whatever the 50s or whatever you know whatever and it's like and people are still kind of racist in the 50s or whatever you know I, um and then the next generation is like, yeah, my dad was kind of racist. Like, he kind of was like, he wasn't the best person. Like, I'm probably not going to be as racist as that guy. And then, but maybe you're still a little bit racist because your dad was racist. So you got, you know, whatever. Uh, and then that person has a kid. And all of a sudden it's like, racism's dumb. But the gays, like, they're kind of wacky. Like, I don't know what I trust, the, you know. And that person has a kid, like, my, my mom wasn't racist, but she kind of hate the gays. And I don't know why she, you know. And, and then, so it's like, like, but people expect, like, to... Like, there's a light switch where, like, okay, like, we, you know, like, was, like in the 80s, like, it was probably, like, people weren't coming out as gay all the time because it was, like, dangerous to be, you, you know, they think it's, like, a light switch where you, like, you turn it on and all of a sudden, like, everyone accepts people for everything. You, you know what I mean? But it's not. It takes, it takes time. So I always feel like with, like, you have some shitty behaviors in one generation. The next generation's, like, we're going to be less shitty than, than my parents were. And the next generation, we're going to be less shitty. Next generation, less, so... so it's not a light switch. We don't just turn. We don't just flip the switch, and all of a sudden we're we're enlightened. It takes generations to overcome uh, the dumb shit that our parents did and the dumb shit our grandparents did. Does that make, does that make sense? Like, yeah. no, like, I... like, like, but 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 we all think it has to happen now. So it's like, if you're not fucking believing in gender whatever, like right now, like uh, then you're a fucking insane. Not what 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 you know whatever the arguments are. Like I don't I don't pay attention to that stuff, but it's like. Maybe the gender thing's totally valid. Maybe maybe there's some weird shit with gender that, like, you know, our whole lives we've been conditioned to be like man and woman, like I, whatever. But you know, then you have the, the manly dude that's kind of feminine. Like I don't know. Like uh, maybe in like three generations, you'd be like, I don't know. Like there is some science to kind of back up this, and everyone's just kind of yeah. You got uh, you know, boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. You know, the the the, the famous kindergarten comp line. But maybe maybe it is more. Maybe it's not as clear as boy girl for certain things. Like like I I don't know. I'm just using it as an example. Like. Um, uh, it's not it, it, one generation has has a point of view that's kind of shitty, and each generation it gets a little bit better, a little bit clearer. 
Uh, but 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 every generation has their own faults, and just through enough time, we kind of figure that out. We get a little better. There's a new issue that we got to deal with. Figure it out. Get better. New issue. And I, I don't know. I have no idea where I was going with that or how I got caught on no, that tangent. I get it. But no, no. I mean, that's that's a whole thing, you know, to just kind of exercise whatever we're thinking. I mean, we don't we don't have agendas, you know. To me, I think conversations are for people to take away from them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, we're all learning from whatever somebody's saying, and sometimes it can resonate, sometimes it doesn't. And to me, it's just I'm all about community. You know, I want that's yeah. I want I want to see people just coming together and solving problems. You know, because it I kind of feel like we're beginning to like we're getting there. We're like, getting there. Like I don't I don't believe in all this like. Um, What's it called with all the signs and that, you know, Virgo is in Mercury. Oh, 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 or, astrology. Or, or, do you yeah, believe yeah. any of that? No, but but but, but I, I'm a fucking Libra. Every time I, I read Libra shit, I'm like, that's fucking me to a T. Yeah. Like, that is like, that is. Well, I, I believe too, like the description. But um, like I was listening to somebody. I don't know how, why I came across this. And they're talking about we're in the age of Aquarius. Okay. And I think it started like in February and there's these cycles, I guess, that the planet goes through. Um, what's the two fish? Uh, Pi- is it Pisces? So, is yeah, that- we, we just ended that. Okay. So, and I guess Pisces is where you're easily manipulated, materialistic, right? Like it was a whole trend whole- of, of humanity, though. It's like... I don't know if it's like 15,000 years. I, I, or think something. I think it's like 12 or 15,000 years where it something. goes to a new age. Yeah. Right. And we're, we just came into it, I think, in February. And it's where we realize that we don't need governments and that what we're, we are we're, we're, we're starting we're capable. To, we're starting of, to wake up a little more. Yes, to like, oh. that, like even the kids, the kids nowadays that are being born, they're more but, aware and conscious of things. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when I was a kid, I didn't know anything. Right. And I was like confused about everything. And. I wouldn't really talk. I was kind of quiet because I was like, I don't want to sound dumb. Yeah, yeah, You know, and I was always, everyone thought I was serious, but it was like, no, I I just want to know. But the thing is, like the people, the older people I was around, not my parents, but like neighbors and stuff, they were, they were kind of crazy. Right. And I go, dude, why would all these adults make shit up? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Like I had this one guy who told me, yeah, because I, I, I grew up in Santa Cruz in a little town called Watsonville. And this one, I can't remember what he was. He was like, yeah, when I was in high school, we won the World Series. And I was like, I never heard of that. I was <laughs> like, is that real? You know? This guy bullshit me this whole time. He yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, was. Yeah. And I even interviewed him for something. And he was like, yeah, war is good because, you know. It stimulates the economy or something. Or, like no, no. He, uh, uh, you, you lower the populations. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what the but I remember a lot of older people that uh, um, Kyle Kingsbury, he says you have olders who are kind of like mad and always like upset about. And then you have elders, right, who can like talk to you about stuff about like meditation mm-hmm. and like a different yeah, yeah. point of view and are more expansive and are kind of living in the moment. And you can learn from them and they're still learning. And it, it felt like all the adults that I was running into a majority of them didn't. They were making shit up. They're just making shit up. Yeah, just, just, just yeah. I, I can, I can hundred percent see that, man. There's, yeah, especially as a kid, where, where you hear people like, what, adults just go out and lie to kids. Like that doesn't make sense to a kid. Like, 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 so, so you hear these things and like, huh. But maybe because there was no internet back then, right? So everyone can. How yeah. is there? It's, how are you going to prove if that's real or not? Wait, 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 wait. What? The, the, the problem with the internet now, though, it's like it's like the reverse problem of. Everybody can be proved right or wrong. Like, like there is something on the internet to prove. You know, I, I bet you if you look up the, the you know, the, the, the population thing from wars and, and lowering the population, I bet you you can find articles of like, scientifically, this is actually great for global warming. Like, you can probably find some article that's like, supports that, like, very validly of like, damn, that makes a lot of sense. And you can find the same thing of, of how terrible wars are for everything. You, you know what I mean? Like, like the, I th- the problem with the internet is there's so much information and there's so many people putting all sorts of shit out there and a lot of it sounds th- th- this is why I don't watch documentaries often because usually like when there's a documentary the person has a, a an agenda th- they have some sort of agenda but when you watch it it's like fuck man like 
I got to stop eating meat and, or I got to stop eating this or I got to stop. We can't do fracking. But then, then if you, you know, you, you see the counterpoints and it's like that documentary was full of shit, I think. Like, like, but maybe that person countering the documentary is full of shit. Like, you don't know. Like, p- people are so good at presenting information that sounds so accurate until you until you get somebody that like rebuts it and like well that person sounds right too like you can't have two things uh two opposite points of view both be right but they both sound convincing so it's like it just it fucks it fucks with your yeah, mind that, no, that, it's that, true. i think that's the time when i go grab that bag of hershey's kisses and it's just like you know what i can't i can't do this anymore just i'm just gonna eat these things and uh watch tv are you still doing jujitsu i remember no i keep thinking i keep thinking about it i i, I took a i took a muay thai class not too long ago and i was like I, I was doing the warm ups and I was just like, there's a bunch of younger, younger kids in there and I was just, I had like three laps around this tiny ring and I was just like, oh fuck, I'm dying. Like this is not like I am not in shape as as much as I thought. I, I was ready. Like I've been like lifting a little bit of weights and I'd be like, I'm ready for this. Like, nope. I was just, no. I was dying. But I, I keep thinking about going back to to, to jujitsu. My buddy just started his own academy. Like he he launched his own uh, here in in Yuba City. In, in Yuba City, yeah, uh, ground up jujitsu. Is it that one over there by like Habit Burger and that little? Um, you know, uh, no, the, the, they're in the Hillcrest. Uh, they're, they're, in the, they're, in the, they're in the Hillcrest thing. I think the one by Habit Burger was uh, Empire. And I don't think they're there anymore. Uh, I don't think they are. Maybe they where's are. Hillcrest here on Clark? It's uh, yeah on Clark and uh, okay. yeah yeah. So so they, they they just started within the last month. They they started their own school and and. Uh... Is it Sean Tribble or yeah yeah okay. Sean. For some reason, I thought he started in Sacramento. He has one in Sacramento as well, or uh, I don't. I think he lives in Sacramento. Okay, because uh, he used to do the Gracie Baja, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, I seen that. I seen that he left Gracie Baja, mm-hmm. but I thought he took it to Sacramento. I didn't know he did it. Here. No, he's, he's still, he's still, he's in here. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been out from uh, not it's, doing jujitsu? It's, it's been years. I, I went back for like a fundraiser thing one time, and I was like, oh god, like jujitsu is so taxing. Like it is so hard and and uh i i love like i i think like every day like i should go back i should go back i should go back um but it's like you have to go at least a couple times a week which which i like like i went back for a short time like years ago and i went like once a month and i was like "Mm, i'm paying a lot of money to go once a month and i'm not getting any better uh (laughs) so but i I love jujitsu like i I, can i keep thinking i should go back yeah Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a sign. You look fitter though. Are you walking or just working out at home or I, body I, weight? I was doing. I was going to the gym. Like I started like actually lifting like barbell, which which I've never done before. I've never been strong and like, you know, I was like squatting like one thirty five, and I was like, fuck yeah, like like I'm feeling pretty like. And, and then I realized like, oh, one thirty five, like that's like baby, like that's like baby weights, like like it's not, oh, that's you, okay. you know. And, and so and so like I started like. If I started like focusing a little more on eating protein, which I I'm not good at eating protein because like my wife's a vegetarian and I don't end up making a lot of meat, so I end up eating mostly vegetarian shit or junk food. Um, so I started like trying to like uh, intentionally increase my protein, which was a huge help. And um, I just just doing some basic barbell barbell like just doing uh, squat, deadlift, and bench press. Um, no man, issues your it, knees your hips everything's good no yeah yeah it, 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 everything felt pretty fine i mean i started off pretty like i said i started off really light because it was like like with, with the bench press i was scared like uh to go down and not come back up and then like like it's weird for me like cause I'm, I'm not i'm not a gym guy so like at like i don't ask people for for especially it feels weird when you're i'm, I'm in like six six one and like 250 pounds like oh, hey guys I'm, I'm i'm doing you know 125 here can you spot me like it feels like uh, hear, dude. Yeah, so but but uh I, but after after doing it for a few months of just doing that i was like i got pretty comfortable and all of a sudden i was like throwing on 45 plates and like like and I, I still feel like it's not strong but like i've never been a strong person but like all of a sudden i was like Phew, i was deadlifting you it know feels good. 275 you and like this, this is like this feels like is this what it, 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 here's what it did it gave me a glimpse of what strength feels like mm-hmm. and like when you feel strong you start like walking a little taller. You start feeling a little more confident. You start feeling pretty damn good about yourself when you're just like, and well, like I said, I, I feel like I was at the beginning of strength, not even like a strong person, but no, I think I, it's good, you know, because it helps with like bone density and sleeping, everything. It, oh yeah. 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 It, you know, it helps with like relieving stress, right? Like I love weightlifting, but for some reason I've been having a lot of issues with like, I don't know if it's my rotator cup or something. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I can't bench. And um, so I've been doing a lot of, like, crazy uh, stabilizer exercises or 
kettlebells I, more I, mobility i started doing kettlebell like so i i, I see I, I always worried about that of of lifting too because oh you know in the age of like tiktoks and, and youtube reel and facebook reels or whatever like i'll see a lot of videos of like dudes lifting too heavy and like their knees collapsing or something something you know just like the weirdest like workout injuries and i was like i don't i'm not trying to be that no, guy no, like, like so but i always worried about um injuring something uh especially i'm 41 years old like i'm not like i'm not a spring chicken anymore and so I, I'm, I'm sure I probably could have gotten heavy on some of these things, but I, I took it very like, very careful. You're like doing I was, it smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, which which you're I, not trying to do one rep max and everything. No, no. I, like I, 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 everything I did was like a workout set, and and if it felt too heavy, I'd be like, you know what, I'm gonna take these weights off and I'm gonna lower it a little bit because I just, which is usually I, usually growing up like I wasn't a big worker outer, but I would do things until I hurt myself. Like I would like I would do yoga and I'd be like I'm gonna be the best fucking yoga person in here, and I would just. I would do whatever position. Like, I don't care if it hurt. I don't care if it was like, whatever. Like I would just, I would just try to be like, I would push myself too far. And the next day I'd be like, I think I tweaked my shoulder. Like something's hurting. Like this is probably not good. Um, so, but I, I finally like, it took to about when I was 40 where I finally like, okay, like check your ego, man. Like, cool. If, if these 45 plates are too heavy, like throw on the fucking 25s or 35s and, and see how that goes and be cool with that. Like it's, it's fine. Um, but I started doing kettlebell. I started doing a, I have a mace, a mace bell, mm-hmm. and I, I love that thing. Uh, so I started doing like swings with that, and and doing more like non traditional stuff to to focus on more more focus on like movement and mm-hmm. like um, functional strength, just, just functional stuff. Maybe that's what's giving you getting you stronger, you know, because you a lot of like kettlebells and like like you said, um, that mace. Those those things are like unconventional movements, you know, and yeah. You have, all these rotator cuffs and all these stabilizers everywhere. And I feel that that's probably what messes up my shoulder was I've been working out since I've been like 15 off and on, not, not, yeah, not yeah, every yeah. day. And, um, I think it's just like from overuse, you know, I'm doing too much. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm just sticking on to like push ups and, uh, stuff, to, just, just being careful, you know, I yeah. don't, cause, cause I mean, I don't, like you said, you start getting to a point where you're you're getting heavier and heavier, and then like something something's off, or a couple of days later, you're like, the, 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 all that's stiff, that's right. So know? so I, I just transitioned to like doing kettlebells and mace bells and and some non traditional stuff because I felt like like at the gym I was I was doing like squats and I was like I was doing like two fifty whatever and I, and I was like I did it I was like cool like, I didn't think I can do this and I went to do it again and I was like I couldn't. I couldn't do it and I felt off and I felt weird and my form was off and I was like I felt like I was starting to tweak things and I was just like. You know, like I don't, I don't want to get hurt being forty one and not, you know, whatever. And and I and I've been watching this guy on um, Instagram. Who do you watch? Uh, it's it's it, his his tag is I think it's Exit Comfort Zone. It's like this Swedish, this bald Swedish dude. He's like, uh, this is not my little pumpkins, like like, and he just like talks shit and like and swings around a fucking mace. And it's like I, I like I like that guy's view on fitness because I see a lot of videos of like bodybuilders where it's like you do this workout to work out this. And I was like, I don't fucking want, like, I don't want, yeah. like, I don't care what I look like. I don't want to be like, you just want to feel good. I, I just want to feel good. I want to be able to move. And like, like this goes back to the overwhelm of information. It's like, you got to work out your quads, your leg, you, you got to do this workout. You, like, like this guy just does a couple fucking exercises and he works out everything. And it, and it seems to be like movements that you would do normally. Like, like, like it's, it seems to be like all encompassing. And that, that like, um, that registers with my mind of like, that makes sense to me. I can get on board with that. I can follow that. I can, I can, um, I, you know, I, I can be motivated to do that where it feels like I'm actually doing something. Cause I'll see guys at the gym sometimes and it's like, whatever they're doing, it's like, that's like 20 pounds. Like, is that, is that effective? Is that, is that, a, a war- I, I don't know if they're doing war. I don't know. Like I, I'm not judging them, but it's like, oh, it's, but, but it, it's a waste of time too. And, and, though, and they, they, they look dope, dude. They got these big old muscles or whatever, but it's like, I, it's is, not gonna, yeah, those big muscles are going to keep you all I just, immobile I just, and all stiff. Yeah, I just, I just, it's one of those things. I, I just want to, like, I'm not trying to be fucking Mr. Incredible, Mr. Universe, or whatever. I just, I just want to, like, feel good. I want to get a little stronger. I want to have some good movement. I want to be able to uh, go hiking or yeah, just, whatever. just do some normal Canoeing, fucking kayak, do some dance right? shit. Yeah, like, I'm not, not trying to, like, I'm not driving around in a fucking convertible trying to impress <laughs> ladies with my biceps. Like, that's, that's not happening right now. So it's like, I, I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. that's, uh, yeah. No, I, I feel you. I feel the same way. Like, I, I don't. I just want to, you know, my daughter's nine. I want to be able to, like, do stuff with her. Like, I wanted to run a marathon, but I kept messing myself up. Like, all the, like I'd get to, like, 15, 16 miles. That's pretty impressive, though. And then my shins would hurt so or, yeah. bad, you know, or, like, my IT band. Like, all these different things. And I was like, 
Man, I need to lose weight. I think it's all the weight is compounding on all my joints, you know. And Especially if you run on cement, I feel like. Because like, yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I was running like two, three miles, and it was like on cement. I was just like, my fucking feet hurt all the time. My legs hurt. I was like, this is not like, this is, this is not productive. It doesn't get, like, yeah, yeah. This is not like doesn't the get. right thing to do for me. I mean, I still kind of want to, like, just, I remember thinking back in the days, like, who would want to run a marathon? It seems, it still seems to, like, uh, like a 5k, like, like I, I wouldn't mind like learning how to like sprint a 5k. Like, like I just want to fucking dust everybody in a 5k, like just train, like a marathon seems, uh, stupid, like not, not stupid, not stupid, but like, like not my jam. Ex- like, like, yeah, like it's no. just, it just like, it doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't, it doesn't like come off as one of those like life challenges. Like I checked this off my bucket list. I did a marathon. Like it's like, uh, no, I want I mean, eventually I want to hunt, like get into bow hunting or that'd, any, that'd any cool. just, just be even, even being out in nature, you know, even if you don't get anything to be out there, you know, not by myself. I'm not yeah. <laughs> with, I, with a guide or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I, I, I love nature. I am terrified of nature though. Like I, I'm like, like camping, like, uh, I've never been a camper my whole entire life and I've gone a few times and it's like, 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 like cool, like, uh, farm, like whatever. But like, I, I, I realized like I, I went camping with my buddies, like this is probably four or five years ago, like first time camping, like since I was a kid. And they all got like, they're all gun people and they're all fucking wild, wild men, whatever. And I'm just like at night in a tent, like wide open. Cause every noise outside is a fucking bear or a fucking like, it's just, I, I couldn't, I just, I realized like how paranoid I was of like being in nature. Uh, just like, like, um, I'm, t- I love wildlife, but it terrifies. Like I, it's, it's something I got to work on. I'm sure. No, I'm, I'm the same way, but. Just once you're out there, it's just so it's peace. It's peaceful. You know, it's amazing. It's incredible. It, it, it's a weird thing. It is incredible. Like I'll go on some hikes, and it's like I can just be out here. I, I don't want to go back inside. I just want to. I want to live at this fucking lake or whatever. Like I just want to put a tent right here and just live here. Uh, if it wasn't for all the damn wild animals, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like. But it, it is like rejuvenating. It like your soul is just. It, it kind of has to do with like. Uh, it, there's nothing. I don't have any obligations right now. I'm out in nature getting fresh air there's not like smog around me there's no um obligations i don't need to do anything right now there's not like i'm not sitting here and like oh i could be watching a show You're right being now present You're i could right be on the, the computer moment. researching something no i'm just like i ain't got shit to do but like enjoy this like nice stream trickling and and hearing the birds chirp and like seeing some cool super bright green moss on a log and taking a picture of it and like ah really appreciating it it's it's amazing it's amazing no i i God, man, I, I love... And there's so many nice places here to hike. we got some good places around here. You know, not even just here, like Auburn, you have... Yeah. Um, I mean, I, th- I think it was like an City. hour. There's like there's just a ton of good shit. I'm, have you done... Oh, you haven't... Have you done Table Mountain? Yeah, I've been there a few times. Oh, like, a little overcrowded now. I, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like everyone... I mean, that's where like, everyone goes right now, right? Yeah. Like this time of year? I, I think they close some stuff off or you can't get to certain spots now. Okay. Uh, dude, it, it's weird. Like, t- I've been to Table Mountain a bunch of times. Like, just kind of cruising around and then i went like i think it was like last year and i didn't realize like if you keep hiking there's like this uh it, it, i'm sure everyone knows the name but me still but like there's like waterfalls and like you can hike down this big thing and there's this cool ass waterfall and there's salamanders and like I, I thought table mountain was just a couple like flowers like in this little flat area there was so much more to table mountain and it was it was freaking amazing but i feel like they closed some of that stuff off i, I don't know where it's closed but like I don't know either. I I've seen people they're beginning to go out there with groups and stuff. Because the, the blue was that, is that happening? The, I think the, the, the I think what you're talking or? about. Yeah, I think that's a, the first thing that they do in March or April. But like you said, yeah, there is a water. But I think it might be dried out by now. Is that okay? Yeah. I think somebody posted something about going to Table Mountain and usually where you see this big waterfall. It's, it's all gone. Because yeah. I, I I think there's some property that somebody owns and they cut it off or um, some private property or I, I I don't know where I don't know. Um, but it's, it's still a cool place. It just it gets it does get pretty busy, uh, which isn't a big deal. It's just parking sucks where there's like a thousand cars and there's, really? th- there's no you know you're parking on the side of the road and mm. it's just like so probably during the weeks the best time to go or something. Pro- probably yeah I don't know it's just one of those things where like there's a lot of hiking spots like we, we, we find yeah no, well that than... it's good to know though because I didn't know that go somewhere else because I don't. I, mean, I, I, I don't I, like I, being. I, I could be wrong now. I, I know the last few times I've gone there, it's just been. like... I don't know. I think I think everything's beginning to ramp up. Like everything's yeah. getting jam packed. You know. Yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe now that people can go everywhere, right? Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's. I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like both are true. I feel like everything's <laughs> ramping up, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But people are doing. It, it, it could be that people are doing double duty, where it's like 
I'm going hiking, I'm going out drinking, I'm going to eat some food, I'm going to go to some shows. Where they're, they're just doing everything constantly because they've, they've been locked in their house for two years. Yeah. Been an interesting year. I hope, uh, I hope, I don't know, I hope nothing but uh, good things for everybody. I hope everyone's just taking care of themselves and enjoying everything that's out there in the world, you I, know? I, I think it's going to be a good year. I, I think I really hope people, like, remember, uh, I was thinking about this, how nice it was to be locked like to be shut down and not have any obligations because I, I think it's the biggest thing where i've noticed it's starting to ramp up where it's like fuck i got constantly i'm doing things constantly again like like to where it's like stressful almost like, of, to have it's stressful to have fun where we're where, 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 where <laughs> where you're like, trying to decide what to do right? yeah where, where it's just like man like it was like one of the most peaceful times when it's like everything's closed we ain't got shit to do but hang out this house and it was like it was beautiful it was just like i hope people like remember like how nice that was of like you didn't have any obligations, and you could just relax at your house. And that was it. That was, that was, that was all there was to life: is relaxing at your house and watching some TV, making some good food, maybe having a drink, and just enjoying that time without any of this pull from other things. Like, well, Randy, I think uh, we're coming up to the end of this. Uh, where can people find you? Instagram, Twitter. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you can find me at it's Randy Warner on pretty much everything. I think I think all my stuff is it's Randy Warner. Um, you can find my podcast, the Yas Cast, Yuba and Center Podcast. Uh, it's on like Spotify, Apple, wh- wherever it's found. Um, and you can find me at randywarner.com, which I have a website. I don't do anything with it, but you can find the podcast on there as well. Um, yeah, follow me, whatever. Um, reach, any reach any clo- say hi. any closing words? I doubt, you know I, I should have thought I, I always think about that like I should have some good closing words. I don't got any wise shit to say like I. I <laughs> um, but I think the biggest thing is, is, is love. Like I've been big on like love. Like love, love people. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, everyone comes from a different spot in their life. They they grew up differently than you did. They whatever. They have different beliefs. Just love people, man. Like, like that's the biggest thing. Who cares what they believe? Just fucking love them, man. Like, yeah. People need love right now. Well, with that, thank you guys, and thank thank you to Randy for being the first guest here on the NorCal X uh, YouTube channel podcast. I'll probably have him on again. Maybe go hiking with him and do I something. Love that. Go go uh, eat some different food. We'll figure some things out. But I appreciate you having me. Thank you guys. <laughs>